Welcome to our 2019 Christmas home tour. This year we had a lot of things that happened. We bought an old farmhouse. We decided to take over the shop that we were selling at and we are crazy busy. So lots of stuff you'll see from last year, a few new things, just keeping it simple. I don't feel bad about reusing the stuff from last year because I feel like we made a lot of really great stuff. When you come into our house on our door, we just have a wreath that we made on a Waste Not Wednesday using an old frame. And I went ahead and added some stamps, some greenery on the bottom. And I did go out and buy a big Christmas bow to make it look a little bit more festive. It's seriously the only Christmas thing on my front porch this year. I just didn't have it in me to create a whole vignette. You bought that bow? I thought you made that bow. I'm not good at making bows. <laughs> the good people at Home Goods made that bow. Nice. <laughs> Normally I do like a big Christmas display on the front porch, but then it gets covered in snow. This year I didn't do any display and we have little to no snow. But it's supposed to snow tomorrow, <laughs> a lot. As you come into our entryway, we have the picture of the savior that we keep up year round. But then we have this new fun sign that our realtor gave us for Christmas that I thought would look really good. And I just reused some of my bottle brush Christmas trees from last year. We used them in a dome display, but this year I decided to open them all up and make a little Christmas tree farm. We always get asked about what's behind the display. It's old beadboard out of the ceiling in a house that we salvaged down in Clifton, Arizona. One of my favorite pieces, people keep asking me if it's moving with me, and it absolutely is. I don't know where I'm putting it, but it's coming with me. Some feature wall somewhere. As you come into our living room, you're gonna notice our flocked Christmas tree. This year it came from King of Christmas, so we'll drop a link below if you're interested in it. It's a skinny tree, which is the only thing that really works in our living room because we don't have a ton of space, and I don't love it when a tree overwhelms the room. I really feel like it needs to fit to scale. So the ornaments on the tree are all handmade that we did in crafts last year and a few this year that we actually did. And it's got a couple of the ornaments that the kids made at school on there too. They've snuck them onto my pretty tree the last few days, but I actually think they enhance it, especially the ones with cute Jack and Redrick's face on it. Behind the Christmas tree, we have windows up year round. And so to decorate them, we've just got embroidery hoops with brown paper, IOD stamps, and some recycled greenery from an old wreath. The nativity this year got an update. It's the one that we did. We actually did an entire video on how we did this, but the look really goes with the rest of the house and with the rest of our decor, and it really ties it all together. It's a soft and simple finish with paint and white wax. When I first did it, I felt like it needed something. I went to Michael's and I purchased just a couple of Christmas trees and adding the greenery really ties it all in together. And I love how when I sit on the couch and I'm looking at the nativity, I can see the nativity, the Christmas tree behind it. It just creates a whole look and feeling that I love. On the couch, you're gonna notice three different blankets. They don't necessarily match. I'm not one to spend a lot of money making things matchy-matchy. They're just blankets I've collected over the years and some pillows that I've either sewn or purchased. I like to have blankets because it's cold. Yeah, these blankets actually get used. They're not just sitting back there for looks. The kids will kick the pillows off, but the blankets will get used on a regular basis. They snuggle up with the pillows too. So comment below, let us know. Do you let your family use the blankets and pillows you put on their couch or are they for looks only? Here at the Ray House, we absolutely use all the blankets, all the pillows. If the pillows get dirty, I either replace them or put new covers on them. And I always make sure not to spend too much money on them. Every now and then I'll splurge. Some of my favorite pillows that I did were last year, I used rugs from Ikea and I made these two green and cream striped pillows. They're really farmhouse with a great texture and I think the rugs were like $3.95 each. Yeah, they weren't expensive. Most okay. of our decor is not. <laughs> it's kind of an ongoing theme. Yeah, it's thrifted or found mostly or handcrafted from scraps. <laughs> In front of us on the dining table, we have my dough bowl. We actually just used the pine cones that we had left over from fall. The lamb's ear and the white flowers were also in there for fall. And what I did to Christmas it up was I added some green berries. We've got a ribbon running through it that I think we got at Costco last year. It's just an old ribbon that we had and it's wired so I can give it loops. The wire helps to make the ribbon look more fluid and not flat. That's one of the things I really love about wired ribbon. So I am a little excited about the candles this year. They were a little bit of a splurge. I bought them at Home Goods for $12.99 each, which I guess is not a ton of money, but for me, I'm like, uh, I used everything I already had. But last year I we made candles. <laughs> So in the dough bowl, the only thing I actually purchased though were these three Ray Dunn candles. They're really darling. I like the little um, detail on the front. They smell really good. 
and I wanted to keep the centerpiece low so we could have conversation over the top of it. Yeah, at Christmas time we have lots of family over, a couple of parties and lots of dinners and food. So to have a big tall centerpiece just doesn't make sense this time of year. Last year we had to peek through the Christmas trees to talk. <laughs> I think we have actually ended up just moving it off if people were over, it wasn't very convenient. Yeah, I always make sure that whatever my centerpiece is, it comes off in like two pieces. So I can lift the whole dough bowl and my table runner that I got at home goods, and then the table is free if we need to put food on it. Mostly we eat buffet style, so it just sits here all season. The pom-pom garland behind us is on a sign also made out of a built-in that was made from that same beadboard in the Clifton House down in Arizona. And we get a ton of compliments on that sign. It stays up year round and we just kind of gave it a little holiday cheer with the garland. A little pom-pom action. <laughs> the pom-pom the pom-pom garland is actually really simple to make. We're gonna drop links to all the DIYs below, so make sure you're checking out the playlist. On top of the pom-pom wreath, we also handmade these stockings. I don't have a video on it because I'm not a very good seamstress. I literally just cut them out and slapped them together. She was not happy to be sewing the felt. No, the felt was a little bit difficult for me, but this is our third year using them. They're still holding together. They haven't fallen apart. We did lose one pom-pom and we stole it from the garland above, but we made it work. I think <laughs> next year I really want to do grain sack stockings, so we'll see if I get that far. We also just change out on the side. We have these cute Ikea buckets that are on the wall. During the rest of the year, there's flowers, but at Christmas, we just throw in the Ikea pine trees with a few red berries and we're good to go. A lot of people like Pinterest worthy kitchens. I think mine is between like halfway Pinterest, halfway usable. We have five kids. We, we have a lot of people that come over. We have family that comes and visits. So I don't like anything that's too precious. This year we went ahead and we did not even redecorate above the kitchen cabinets. The decorations you'll see up there are just what we have up year round. I do have some of my favorite finds from France up there. And we're gonna show you the kitchen decorations above the cabinets, but only because I get asked about them all the time. They're the right colors for this time of year. I feel like they just work like they're very classic colors. And while they're not like red and green, it's, it's okay. We have greenery. Greenery, fake boxwood wreaths. Absolutely, and I don't think everybody needs to decorate above their kitchen cabinet, especially if there's not a lot of space, but in our kitchen, we have these really high vaulted ceilings and kind of low builder grade cabinets. So without anything, it's just very underwhelming. Yeah. About every six months I go up there, pull everything down, redecorate, clean it up because it starts to get a little cluttered and I just like to keep it clean. But right now it's nice and full. As far as decorations go in the kitchen, we just have this cute little Santa display that we picked up from Costco on top of a Walmart cake plate pedestal. On the oven, I just went with a French monogrammed grain sack towel. We use a ribbon so that way all my kids know that it's decorative because that actually did come from France. So ain't nobody wiping their hands on it. No, it's not for use. That one is not. We will take it down before Zeb's brother Ty comes. He doesn't like the not for use towels. And he will use them. Yeah, absolutely. He's the biggest dude in the house and he'll be like, I'm, I'm using that, stop me. <laughs> Next to the kitchen sink, we just have a couple of Christmas trees that I picked up at Michael's. I didn't do anything to them except for buy them. And this year I was so late in decorating, they were 70% off when I picked them up. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Finishing off our home tour, Jack and Eliza are real crafty. Eliza likes to help Jack do crafts and then they create their own thing. They've got some snowflakes on the window that they designed and created themselves. They're very proud of them. And uh, we, we definitely like them. They add a little cheer to the back window. I can guarantee that more snowflakes will be made, especially when cousins come. Usually by the end of Christmas break, our entire window is covered in snowflakes and you can hardly see outside. For all the things that are stamped or painted that you see on our homemade Christmas ornaments, our nativity, all of that is done with the paint and products that we carry on our website, jamierayvintage.com. When you shop at jamierayvintage.com, you're helping support our family, our YouTube channel, and our farmhouse renovation. We hope you guys enjoyed our 2019 Christmas tour. We kept it simple this year, and we can't go without saying that we love you guys. We hope you have a Merry Christmas. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
hit the subscribe button.